Uh, I'm here with Sir Timothy Thrapp and Wits Ministries, and we have an awesome show tonight. Yeah, we do. And uh, brother, brother Martin and I were just discussing it, and uh, yeah, awesome. It's it's this is going to be one of the the best uh, things that we've done. One of the best shows we've done. We're doing a technology giveaway tonight: how to make your own sun at home. Uh, and uh, in other words, it's dangerous, so don't think it's you know it is high voltage, so be careful. But you can make your own a little sphere of plasma, and we're going to show a video about that. Uh, the ministry's been doing this for a long time. I know Stubblefield perfected it. He was running his house, and he did it for a number of other people also, running his house, lighting and heating his house. So that's awesome technology. Yeah, so let's go ahead and do the science segment. This is how to build your own sun at home. The sun is a plat ball of plasma. And we don't know everything about the sun, but it's an interesting setup. Uh, and I've, I've helped build these miniature suns. Uh, some people call them suns. You can call them what you want. But uh, um, different people have used them for heating their homes and for lighting their homes. Stubblefield was one of the famous ones. He died, and the neighbors thought he was still alive because there was heat coming from the inside of the house. Uh, there was, the windows were, were not frosted up. Uh, the, uh, the light, there was plenty of light inside the house. And uh, they thought he was. They thought he was still alive. And then th three months, they had nobody had seen him. They finally broke in the door. It was winter time, by the way, but it was late winter, like in March or something. They finally broke in the door, and he'd been dead for three months. And they could tell, you know, by the decomposition of the body and so on. But the heater was still going, and it was a little sun uh, about about this big, and uh, and it, and he didn't lighted his whole house. And you know, the sun is not a nuclear furnace like they teach you. It's a plasma ball. It's a ball of plasma. It does not give off poisons and radiation and all this foolishness that they're always telling us. Um, there may be a little of that going on, but not a lot. And so these things are relatively safe. So you're going to see a video on how to do it, uh, and you're welcome to ask questions, and you're welcome to get consultation. We encourage people to get consultations. Uh, it's the first gift on the gifts page. You can ask about anything you want, including the, the plasma ball or the miniature sun and how to make it at home. But basically, it's way over unity. You just need a high voltage and under the right conditions, you can even get rid of the high voltage. In other words, you don't need to leave it on all the time. Under the right conditions, you can get rid of it. Uh, under the right conditions, you can get rid of the magnets. There's magnets that focus the uh, energy into a plasma ball. And you're going to see all that um, here coming up. And I say get rid of the magnets. The magnetic field is still there. But uh, if you, under the right conditions, you can get rid of the magnets as well. Okay, well, let me go ahead and play the so, video, and uh, and this is a, uh, a multi-part uh, series on the web, uh, and we will provide a uh, link for it uh, uh, when we put the show up. So um, uh, we're just going to play about the first nine or ten minutes here, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. We'll, and I, we'll talk a little bit more after the, oh, after the video. Oh, one thing I do want to say before you start, uh, they are saying it's a brand new discovery, a brand new theory, and they're calling it the primer fields. This is exactly what we've been teaching for 200 years of World Improvement Ministries, and we've been demonstrating it for 200 years. Uh, and we call it the primary fields, or the polar field, or the dominant energy fields. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> the, the fact that he's saying brand new doesn't make it brand new. This is just so people understand. A lot of people think because people keep saying it over and over, that makes it true. That doesn't make it true. Uh, I'd say this guy is taking some of our classes. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, very probable. Uh, I don't remember his names particularly. But uh, you get these groups of scientists, and, and they'll always pick the least known one, and he'll be taking a bunch of classes, and he'll be secretly recording them and playing them back for everybody else. So this happens a lot, just so you know. I'm not supposed to do that, but they do. And then, uh, and then he patents and everything and claims he invented it. It's a brand new theory. It's not a brand new. He even admits in the video, if you watch the whole series, that it's, that it's very old stuff. Uh, it's been around a long time. And it's around before the ministry, too. The ministry just been openly teaching it for about 200 years. And I've taught it on this show before as well. And JT has it in his book, by the way. So, way, so you, both of those are proof that it was around way before this guy. Here we see the representation of a single photon of light. Scientists understand many of the properties of light, but light still holds some mysteries that perplex us. Thomas Young first demonstrated the wave nature of light in 1803 with his famed double slit experiment. And ever since then, the world's top minds have debated what the results of this experiment actually mean. Although Young's double slit experiment is repeated many times every day, we are always left with the same perplexing question that goes to the core of quantum mechanics 
and even our very understanding of matter. Is light a particle or a wave? Experiments have revealed that light has the properties of both a particle and a wave, but how can it be both a particle and a wave? Then we find this to be the case for all electromagnetic radiation and all matter. This leaves the world's brightest minds still searching for answers to this basic question. Is matter a particle or a wave? In this video series, you will be shown the solution to our dilemma. In fact, you are looking at that solution right now. The fields shown around the green photon are electromagnetic fields of opposite polarity, with the red field being of north magnetic orientation and the blue field being of south magnetic orientation. It will be proven that this is actually the way that magnetic fields are structured around all matter. This applies from the smallest particles we have discovered to the largest structures in space. If you were to measure these fields with a compass, their magnetic fields would appear identical to the magnetic fields of a bar magnet. This also means that when we measured the magnetic fields of matter with other methods in the lab, we also assume that matter had a bar magnet type of magnetic field, but this assumption was a mistake. So until now we have incorrectly assumed that electrons and other matter have a magnetic field shape as shown in this drawing. But we must realize that the fields around an electron as well as around all other matter are actually two opposing bowl-shaped electromagnetic fields. Unless we properly understand this basic magnetic field structure, we will never be able to properly understand the fundamental forces of matter from the subatomic to the galactic. In this presentation, you will be shown that correcting this one basic misunderstanding of magnetic fields also explains most all of our problems in physics and astrophysics. I believe that this magnetic field structure is an intrinsic property of all matter. Therefore, you cannot have a particle of matter unless these magnetic fields are there to form it and confine it. To further understand these magnetic fields and validate this new theory, hundreds of experiments were conducted utilizing a vacuum chamber and specially constructed bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters. When 70,000 volts of electricity is applied, the plasma formations that you are now seeing appear. A variety of purging gases were used in these experiments. This includes ordinary air, argon, hydrogen, and helium. The spacing and orientation of the magnetic field emitters were varied in many ways as well. The magnetic field emitters were suspended on non-conductive high-strength microfilament line attached to magnetic supports on the inner surface of the vacuum chamber. Then to hold these supports in place, high-strength magnets were utilized on the outer surface of the vacuum chamber. This arrangement allows for the adjustment of the magnetic field emitters while the experiment is running. The small microfilament support lines also offer minimum disturbance of the plasma flow around the fields and therefore a more realistic experimental result. A variety of bowl-shaped magnetic field emitters were utilized in these experiments in order to reveal how changing the geometry of the field emitters affects the matter around them. As you can clearly see here, a change of magnetic field emitter geometry also results in a change in the shape of the plasma formation within the vacuum chamber. By adjusting the exposure settings on the camera, an X-shaped pattern is revealed between the magnetic field emitters 
that is amazingly similar to the shape of the red square nebula. You can even see the bowl shape of the magnetic fields in the red square nebula. Notice how increasing the spacing between the magnetic field emitters transforms the shape of the nucleus until finally a disk of plasma forms around the nucleus. Also notice the rapid spin of the plasma around the magnetic field emitters even though the field emitters are stationary. Here you can clearly see how even a single magnetic field emitter controls the shape of the plasma around it. Notice how it confines the plasma to the lower part of the vacuum chamber. Okay, we're back. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, that's, uh, I encourage people, if you're interested in making your own sun, you know, feel free to watch them all. And if you still have questions and comments, uh, questions, excuse me, uh, feel free to get a consultation and we'll help you more. But I'll give you the basics. Basically, you get a, a magnetic field and it, uh, the, the hemisphere shape is good. It's, you, you need that. And we talked about that before on the show. You can do them side to side. You don't have to do them top and bottom. But top and bottom is more like we're used to thinking about because of the way the sun is. Uh, you can do them top, but you can also do them side to side. Anyway, the, the, we've talked about this before, how, him, how uh, stubble fields uh, heater worked. And, uh, and you basically uh, you put a high voltage little sphere right in the center, a DC, and let that spray out toward the magnets, uh, which are grounded. And, uh, and basically, after a few minutes, you get everything right, you'll get a plasma ball form there, a, a ball of plasma. And it gets quite hot, and it gets a lot of light, and uh, it's over unity. Uh, you basically need some high voltage to get started, basically uh, maybe 25, 50,000, that range, 70,000. Uh, the higher the voltage, the better. The, amp the current is not really relative in these situations. Uh, a vacuum is nice, but not needed. Um, it'll help you get it started. Uh, yeah, and certain gases make it a little easier also. So right. feel free to learn it all. And uh, did you have any comments, Brother Martin? Yeah, you were uh, you were mentioning uh, that uh, th now this kind of thing will uh, uh, the plasma ball will sort of form there after a certain amount of time, and uh, that yeah. was kind of interesting to me because that just tells me that the um, the high voltage supply isn't really the thing that's that's supplying all the uh, all that's necessary to actually form that plasma ball, maybe. Yeah. Another plus, one. plus the the wattage wise, we're talking maybe you know 10, 15, 20 watts is all that's needed. You get everything right uh, to get it started, and uh, and you get everything perfect. You can actually remove the input the input high voltage together. That you're heating the whole room, lighting the whole room, uh, whatever you know. So that's that shows you the power is coming from. The, the quantum, he calls it the primer fields, but uh, we call it the primary fields, the quantum or the polar or di dominant energy fields. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's awesome stuff. It's, uh, that's, that's it's definitely really the future, I think. In yeah, I was going to say also that uh, he mentions in the video that uh, the disk that forms, uh, I, I believe he said he was, it rotates around uh, the yeah. ball. It, it does give a little bit of rotation. Uh, one of the things that's real easy to see is that as uh, right at the right at the equator of this miniature sun, there'll be places that the ball wants to stay. And and yeah, if you give it a little spin, it'll it'll want to keep going usually in one direction. 
uh, usually the same rotation direction as the as the sun itself. The sun itself, you look at it, you'll see it rotating on its axis. This little sun that you made, just like the sun does in, in this. You know, if you look in the sky, uh, you know you can't always tell without the right kind of lenses to filter out. You know, you get too much light and so on. But the sun is rotating on its axis in the sky, and the Earth's rotating its axis. And and the little balls will want to move in one direction, in the same direction as the rotation of the uh, the sun, and. Uh, the, also, the little steel balls, these are steel balls, non, not magnetized uh, initially. In other words, once you put them, anything that's iron, once you put it in a magnetic field, it becomes a magnet right away. But you'll see that they actually have little places they want to stay that are set distances, and these set distances are all mathematical to each other, and they exactly fit with the nine planets we have rotating the, around the sun. Uh, and so there's little, like little grooves in space, if you want to say it that way. If you go back to Einstein's theory about space being bent, there's these little channels that these things want to roll in, and they don't want to come in. You think a magnet would just attract right in, and it, and it will if you get it close enough and so on, but if you find one of these grooves, you'll see that it wants to stay the ball bearing, wants to just roll around and around in one of these grooves, and if you take the two cups, uh, he calls them bowls, but we call them hemispheres. If you take the two hemispheres, you move them further apart, Gradually, this line moves further apart, and the the uh, the ball that's rolling will move further out and further out. So that shows you, even if the sun shrinks or if the sun grows, the planets automatically adjust their distance. This is a mechanism that God built into the universe. Pretty awesome stuff. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. So so basically, uh, the way I understand it, you've got your two hemisphere magnets. And uh, you basically initiate, uh, initialize the plasma ball in the center of them, and I guess you can adjust the, the spacing and everything. Uh, and you're saying that depending on the arrangement of, of these factors, like the, magne the, the strength of the magnets, how far they are apart, I guess how, how, uh, how your plasma ball grows to a certain size, it will determine, um, for instance, orbits around that disk that gets formed uh, and uh, the little places that things would like to stick into. Yep. Okay. And if you put a whole bunch of them, here's an interesting thing, if you put a whole bunch of them in one groove, a whole bunch of little ball bearings in one groove, they wind up equally spacing themselves from each other. And you'll see this on the video too. And that shows you that if we advance as a civilization, which we will during the thousand years of Christ, we could literally put several planets in the exact same orbit of Earth and have no danger whatsoever of them hitting each other. Uh, so that's, that's uh, you know, it's awesome when you think about it. You know, yeah. the exact same distance from the sun as the Earth, the exact same path as the Earth, and they're automatically be equal distance. And, of course, that's why there's a theory that there's one on the opposite side of the sun directly opposite us, and it could be. You know, I don't know. Uh, there's a, there's this theory, you know, you got the hollow earth theory, and then in this case you got this other world theory, the mirror image earth theory, on the opposite side of the sun, exactly on the opposite. And it could be because it, they do equal distance. So if you got two of them, one will tend to be the opposite side of the. If you got three of them, then you'd see all three from where you are. But if you got just two of them, you're not going to see that one on the other side because the sun's blocking it all the time. It's an eclipse or whatever you want to call that. Uh, and if you got four of them, then you'd see two of them, and you wouldn't see the one on the other side because they automatically go equal distance from each other. Uh, you know, it may take a few years with something as big as a, as a planet, you know, to, to get it get settled out, you know, because they don't react quite as fast. You know, the bigger the object, the slower it reacts. But you can see this quite clearly when you play with these things. I've had the pleasure of helping the ministry build some of these. And these are ancient secrets, by the way. Uh, pyramid means fire in the middle. Py pyro is fire. Uh, and mid is middle. And literally... There was fi uh, fireballs in the ancient pyramids right in the center, in the physical geographic, uh, geometric center. If you get all the volume, you figure out all the volume of your pyramid, you pick that center. I think that's the Queen's Chamber in the Pyramid of Giza. And there was a fireball in there, our sun, a miniature sun. It doesn't make smoke. It, it, uh, they burn very clean. As long as the humidity stays good, right, the right levels, and you don't get too much wind movement, uh, which you don't inside those pyramids. They, the humidity stays extremely constant, and uh, then these things will burn forever. And you get a you get a belt because the pyramids channel a huge amount of energy. You don't even really need these cups anymore. You can remove those, or the or the bowls, or, or the hemispheres, whatever you want to call those. You can remove those completely, 
and the things keep burning. Also, another place you can do this is the room at the top. I've explained this on previous shows. There's, there's At the top of the pyramid, there was no capstone. They always say the capstone is missing. There, well, there was no capstone. It was a room up there with a lot of energy being channeled straight up, and that energy is another good place to make one of these balls. And again, you don't need... Uh, you don't need the the hemisphere as well because there's so much energy shooting through this thing. It stays plenty active on wow. its own. Uh, yeah, so and to this day, you can climb to the top of one of these and take a metal object like an axe uh, or any kind of metal, big metal object, a knife, big knife or whatever, and swirl around your head and you'll see sparks coming off of it. Uh, to this day, in other words, even though the pyramids are in bad shape and everything else, and there's a number of other places you can do this as well. So, That's in other words, these cones over here. These cones over here that they call the Chocolate Hills of Bohol uh, and try to say they're natural structures, which they're not. Um, yeah, yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, anyway, so that's that's all good. That's all good. Yeah, so it's it's interesting stuff. So, yeah, again, if you, you know, if you'd like to build your own sun, just be careful. It is dangerous. It is plasma. Plasma can... You know, it can uh, it can definitely destroy things. It can burn a hole right. Th I've seen it burn holes right through uh, books and even solid steel and even uh, concrete. In one case, it, one of them hit one of the plasma balls. If you're not careful, you can get you trying to when you're trying to remove the magnetics, uh, you can easily get the thing can you can lose control and start floating around the room and uh, or moving around the room in fast fast motion. And uh, and I've seen it. You know eat a hole right out of the floor, hit the floor and explode, and then there's a big hole in the floor where, where it hit. Uh, it's shaped like the hemisphere. You know, it seemed like half the sphere went there before it exploded. Uh, so these things are a little bit dangerous. So, you know, they, I guess I should say don't try this at home. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so don't try this at home. But it's, it's an interesting experiment. And if you know what you're doing, I think you can do it, honestly. But uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you shouldn't do it. Well, so. I think that's, uh, that anyway. is really, that, that's really fascinating because I mean, I've never really known too much about this. I know a long time ago you mentioned to me uh, about these little uh, these plasma uh, spheres that uh, could be formed. And uh, I guess another name for that would be ball lightning. I guess ball lightning would be related to all this. Yeah, absolutely. Ball lightning, bead lightning, same thing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, and there's different ways to make it. This is not the only way to make it, but uh, this is definitely one of the ways. Uh, and they're all over Unity, pretty much. Uh, you know, you think about it. Uh, it usually doesn't take more than a few thousand watts at the most to make one of these. And then if you can figure out how to cut the power down, which immediately we always cut the power down, start cutting it down, and eventually you can get rid of it. If you run it long enough, if you got your right, your right kind of setup, Again, it likes constant humidity. Uh, it likes magnetic fields. Uh, there's different things that make it last longer. It likes the hemispheres on both sides, and you can do them from side to side or top and bottom, however you want to do it. And uh, and you get all that right. Uh, yeah, you can cut the power down to nothing, literally zero. Um, or you can have it connected to the Earth, and it'll keep putting out power from the Earth, because these wow. these things tend to be born off of off of each other. Uh, in other words, the Earth itself, I think, is a burned out one of these, or mostly burned out. All right, uh, Brother Riscala. Sir T, please clarify the statement about no radiation from the sun. It was, I was under the impression that there are tremendous amounts of radiation from the sun. Yeah, at times there are tremendous amounts of radiation from the sun, um, and it varies. In other words, you get sunspots, and you'll see this on your own sun if you make one at home. Uh, S-U-N, I'm talking about, uh, not S-O-N. <laughs> if you see this on your own sun, <laughs> if you make one at home, S-U-N. Uh, your own little uh, plasma ball, you'll see that there are certain little spots that erupt and literally have magnetic fields and radiations when they do. But the best way is to get a little Geiger counter and check it for alpha, beta, and gamma. Get a Geiger counter that does all three. Alpha and beta, you'll find that it dissipates within a few inches or a few feet. Alpha, usually a few inches. Beta, a few feet. Just dig gone. It doesn't even make it that far. The air itself absorbs it. It's a huge... Uh, Gamma is deadly if you get too much of it. A little bit of it is probably not going to hurt you because we're getting a little bit of it all the time anyway. But, uh, yeah, you can check your own machine to see how it's doing. Different, different machines or different, different plasma balls uh, do different production and so on. So, yeah, it's good to check everything to make sure you're not, you're not overdoing it on any kind of radiation. But I do think these things are basically safe. A number of people I know use them for heating their home. And they seem to have no side of no negative side effects that I can tell. 
brother Brent in Oregon says, question for the show, does this plasma experiment add some proof to the theory that the sun might be hollow? At some point, the plasma did look like it was hollow. Yeah, absolutely. I, I do believe that the sun is most likely hollow. I've seen these things, and if you make them, certain ways to make them, you, you can actually look that right down. Uh, they, they put a hole in the center. If you watch that whole video, there's a hole in the center of this magnet. Look right down in that hole. And uh, you can see that it's a certain way to make them where they don't shoot out light out through that hole. And there's actually a hole on both the north and the south pole on these plasma balls. And that gives credence to the hollow earth theory as well. Uh, you know, which, again, may or may not be true. But, uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. At some point, the plasma looked like it's hollow. Absolutely. I, it does look like it's hollow at some points. Not, not all the time, but it does look like it's hollow at some points. And we played a video a couple weeks ago of the sun with a big chunk missing out of it, a big pie-shaped piece missing out of it, and it looked like it was hollow inside there. Uh, so, anyway, again, I don't know everything about it, but we can, we can, you know, you can look and you can do measurements and you can do analysis and you can come to your own conclusions or your own hypothesis. And uh, that's what learning is all about, life and learning. Amen. Living, loving, and learning. And, uh, and believing God and loving God. Yeah, that's what life's all about. At some point, plasma looked like it's all. Okay, Brother Jim says, is the ministry going to offer plans for this technology on the gifts page? What we offer is classes and on everything. You can basically, the number one gift on the gifts page, the first gift is classes, is a class. And you can get a class on this subject, any subject you want. And we'll teach you how to do it. Uh, as far as plans goes, we have seven plans. We're not planning to change any of those plans or add to them at this point. Uh, but, but you can learn from the classes. You can learn plans from the classes, but you don't get written plans. We'll, we'll draw things out, hold them up on the screen. You can draw them out, that type of thing. Uh, and classes are great. Most people do learn better from classes than they learn from plans. But plans are great, too. There's nothing wrong with plans. There's seven, seven plans to choose from right now on the gifts page. And we're not planning to add to those. But you can get the class if you like the class. And you can get as many classes as you want. If you, don't, if you have a one-hour class, you don't understand it, you can get another one-hour class. There's no limit to how many classes you can get. Uh, you do just have to make sure you've met the minimum donations for each class. Uh, where do you get magnet bowls like this in the video? You make them. And if you can't make them yourself, then you have to have somebody else make them. Because as far as I know, they're not made anywhere. Uh, and if you get to take the class, I can tell you some other ways to do it that are easier than actually making a magnet from scratch. Because uh, we didn't make, there weren't, we, we, we originally used uh, other ways, I'll put it that way. And, and a lot of the, there are still ancient tribes that are still doing this to this day. If you read Jonathan Gray's, uh, if you get his newsletter, uh, he recently had an article, and it probably came in, I probably have it in the uh, comments for the show category file, but he recently read an article about uh, a certain tribe that was connected with Egypt at one time, but now they're, of course, into ancient Egypt at one time, and, and they learned how to do this from ancient Egypt, and they still live underground, and they still have a big city above ground, but they only come out at night. And they carry these things around with them, these little miniature suns. They have the secret to how to make the great light, oh, wow. is what it said. Yeah, so it's still being done today. And by primitive, what we would call primitive tribes, although they are very advanced, uh, you know, what we call primitive is not always primitive. Uh, you know, uh, you have to go see what they're doing for sure. Uh, they used to call e ancient Egypt primitive, and nowadays they admit that they couldn't do, they couldn't build the Great Pyramid of Giza. You know, not uh, not nowadays. It's too hard, or it would cost trillions of dollars or whatever. Uh, <laughs> what glass do you recommend, Tom? Line? Oh, do you want to make a comment, Brother Kyle or Brother Martin? No, go ahead. Nope. Uh, -uh. nope. Okay. What gla Brother Lineball is asking, what glass do we recommend? How do we get it? Again, take the glass, but any kind of heat-resistant glass is good. You don't need the glass either. Uh, okay, take the class. Uh, John in California, if one gets one of these suns to run, how does one shut it off? Uh, let's see, that's a good question. I remember ever shutting the off. They do go off once in a while <laughs> accidentally. Uh, let's see, how would you shut it off? If you, if you give it a magnetic pulse in the opposite direction of what it's doing, it would probably work okay to shut it off. Uh, the other ones, some of them need to have that little energy input, and of course if you turn off the energy input then it goes off. But some of them, you can get them to run without the energy input, and those are going to be harder, a little harder to shut off. But they'll shut off on their own. If, if the room has no air, and you take away 
the humidity, they will shut off on their own. Uh, I've seen that happen. And that's what happened to the ones in the pyramid. And, and there's other caves that they found these things in, still running for thousands of years or whatever. Uh, they usually leave the doors open. They usually break down the door, or ch chisel in the door or whatever. And they leave the doors open and the humidity starts to dry out and the wind starts to blow and the things go out. So that's, that's probably the simplest way to turn it off right there. It's just, it's just make sure your air is drier. Uh, your humidity starts to go away, basically. The humidity level needs to be in a certain range to work good. And you'd think it would use up all the humidity in the room because it's obviously using humidity. To, it's burning like a Brown's gas, sort of. It's obviously using humidity. Uh, but it keeps giving off hydrogen and oxygen at both poles. And the hydrogen and oxygen form a new water molecules and new humidity. So it's a self-sustaining type system. It's producing matter, producing hydrogen and oxygen. The air is actually really good in those places. <laughs> So the John in California, would this sun be good for your crops in the winters or indoors? Absolutely. I think so. You know, you can experiment with it. Brother, uh, our, our fourth spokesman, third spokesman, brother uh, Stubblefield was a farmer and an engineer, electrical engineer, and a quantum engineer as well. Uh, but he grew, he had acres and acres and acres of trees, fruit trees and so on, that he heated and lighted with quantum energy. And they did great. He, all the crops around, they'd have an early frost or, or late, late frost, excuse me, and they'd all lose their blossoms or whatever, and his would be heated with quantum energy. And uh, he actually had a way to heat the ground for acres and acres of ground uh, that he did. And we teach that as well. So, if you, again, if you want a class, just, uh, just take a class. Brother Tom says, with regard to the artificial sun, can we create the plasma ball in liquid, non-conductive distilled water or oil, etc.? I haven't done it uh, myself. I've heard that it has been done in, in uh, it's either oil or water or both uh, for transmitting heat energy. Uh, the, tree, the heat energy transmits just fine. The sun doesn't have any tr problem transmitting its heat all the way to the earth. We're 93 million miles away. So... The heat. If you need a bigger, if you need more heat, you just move the magnets apart, basically, and uh, the magnetic fields apart, and the and the plasma ball gets bigger. You don't want to do it too fast. You'll put it out. Uh, you know, you might kill it. But uh, you know, you as you, gra you gradually adjust it, and the plasma ball gets bigger and bigger. And so, it's a great way to do it. Um, if you need more heat, so very simple.